Right, let's get some bloody paint on them, shall we? This feels like it's been a long time coming with these nights. I've been building and converting and getting them ready to this point, ready for paint. This video is designed to show you how to put down paints on large models and vehicles like these knights or tanks or other big things you can think of, monsters maybe. And I'm not using an airbrush because I don't own one. I might get one in the future, but it's a bit of an investment. 99% of people I know in this hobby don't have an airbrush. If you have an airbrush, fantastic. You could actually do this method with an airbrush. But for us plebs out there, this is the ghetto version of airbrushing essentially. You may have heard of slap chop and that works lovely on smaller miniatures with a lot of detail. You may have heard of the zenithal highlight where you spray black and then spray white over the top and then it gets a nice gradient then so you can see where your highlights are going. I am going to combine both of those methods into one thing that I think has worked quite well for me in the past. I've used this before but I'm going to be smart in this video, unlike past videos, and I've got a test model. It's not just these lovely knights that I'm going to accidentally ruin by doing this straight away on them. I've got Tester Tony. He is a Chaos Space Marine that I've primed in the same way using this Colour Forge Matte Black. I'm using this rather than a Citadel Black because Citadel spray paints can be quite satin and this is for the recesses and shadows and you don't want shiny shadows. However, the other spray paints I'll be using are all Citadel because I find their nozzles and their flow is a bit better than Colour Forge. These are the spray paints necessary for this that I'm doing if you're following along at home. The first one, Mechanica Standard Grey. This is replacing the greys in the slap chop method with aerosols. One of the main mistakes I've made and I've seen made with slap chop is not putting enough of the mid-tone colour and then you end up with really dark areas that shouldn't be as dark as they are on the model. The plan is to put quite a heavy coat of this on over the black, really leaving the black in just recessed areas and then move on to Grey Seer. Grey Seer is going to work as our highlight. This is literally going to be coming just down from the top, maybe a slight angle just to catch all of those plates on these knights that need catching. And then from the very top, White Scar. This is literally going to be just from the top, just catching the top edges of everything that needs to be highlighted. Let's get spraying. Is that weird? The rain almost ruined my plan to spray these today, but I made myself a budget spray booth, so enjoy that janky sh**. Let's have a little look at what we've got here then, and remember, like and subscribe to help this new and very young channel grow. I've been going for just over a month now. I sprayed Mechanica Standard Grey, being very careful not to hit it from the bottom at all. Coming in from quite a harsh angle just to make sure I get all the lower points but not the underside recesses of any of the panels or gun or anything like that. This is a little bit of an upskirt to see what it looks like. Yeah, not bad. Didn't hit the underside. Nice coating of grey everywhere else and now the plan is to build up from there. Grey sear going on now. You can see when I hold this to the side I'm holding this at a much higher angle than I was the Mechanica Standard Grey. This gives nice coverage from the top and instills those highlights so we can quickly contrast over it in the next stages. Gracia spray paint smells different to every other spray paint I've ever used. It smells kind of delicious. There we go, lovely view from the top. You can see how bright that's getting at the top now and a shot from the bottom to see how dark those recesses and undersides of those grey panels still are. Coming in with a white scar directly from above now. Side note, make sure all these paints are well shaken because they do leave speckles, but you can minimize that by making sure they're very well shaken and warm. This is the final bit now. You can see the helmet is a lot brighter than the pads lower down, and we've got a nice gray gradient up and down this Chaos Space Marine. Thank you, Tested Tony, for your sacrifice. It's much valued. And the Chaos Gods will reward you in the next life. So, lessons learned with Tester Tony. This is why I did a test model. It was a good idea. Shake Gracia more, because it did come out a bit particly. Less of the final highlights is necessary, less of the white scar. So only little spritzes of that over the top. Um, yeah, not bad. I'm gonna proceed and take those lessons I've learned then into my nights. So I'm gonna batch do all of these nights. Wish me luck.
This was quite a laborious process to start with, especially with the Mechanicus standard grey. I found a hairdryer helped loads for parts like the guns and the arms because you can spray them all grey holding them, but then you can't put them down again, which is a stupid mistake I made and had to go and get this hot pink hairdryer to help me. It has to be hot pink or it won't work. Everything else like the war dogs and the big leg sections were nice and easy. I kept these models in a sub-assembly, mainly just the shoulder pads off, so I could hit the undersides of them and the top of the arms with a metallic spray when the time comes a bit later on in the video. Secret techniques incoming. I put down the grey sear, hair dried, then put down the white scar in one batch. This was a lot more manageable because there's a lot less paint going on, you have to worry about touching it less because it's only coming down from the top so you can just rest all the pieces on the bottom of the spray booth or wherever you're spraying and being able to do two layers in one go certainly helps with your mental health and the time it takes. Important note, I don't get too close or too hot with a hairdryer, it's just to aid it. You don't want to cook it because that will affect the consistency of your primer. I laid all the pieces out for a long time to make sure they were all thoroughly dry. Even though I did a little bit of hairdryer in, I wanted to make sure there was nothing going to be ruined by the next step of these forbidden priming techniques. The Chaos Gods will reward you for watching this heretical video mortal. That's gone reasonably well and the only issue is the little graininess to it which is something I was trying to avoid but with all the weathering I'm going to be doing on this army to make them look dingy and dirty and a bit grimdark I don't think it'll be that noticeable in the end. Just a bit annoying I was trying to avoid it. Unavoidable. I guess this is what you get for trying the poor man's airbrush. The next step in this speed painting for big models is this product. This is Liquid Mask by Vallejo. 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 It's Liquid Mask. So I will be painting on all the panels where I want to keep this nice gradient going for contrast paint later. But I want to respray in metal colours now. Now I know there's a lot of spray paint going on these models but during that spray session then I was trying to avoid metal areas and this is just going to speed up painting that annoying trim and make it all all easier. I'm going to use it on Test It Tony first. I'm going to put it on all the armour panels that I want to keep this nice gradient for to put the contrast paint on after and then it's going to help me paint all of his trim and his weapon and everything in metallic colour real quick hopefully. I don't know if this is worth doing for smaller miniatures like this, but the amount of metallics and armor panels on the big ones, this may be a nice little speed hack. Let's go! You can see I've been relegated from my normal painting desk to this little one I used to display or put my microphone on. And that's because of the big old do-it-yourself spray booth. I've got my liquid mask here, an old brush and this tub to kind of put it in because I think it's a dropper bottle and my water and tissue ready for this experiment. I've shaken this well. I'm going to put it in that far corner so I can keep an eye on it. Oh god. It comes out of there just like paint which is interesting. Let's see how it goes on. I believe you've got to put it on reasonably thick, thicker than you want to put a normal paint on your miniature. Let's have a go at this big shoulder pad first and see how that does. bit weird, it's just like normal paint. I'm trying to blob it on thick like a 10 year old's first Warhammer model. And spread it, oh it flows quite well, not too thick because it will drip it seems. Can get right up to the edges of the armour there. For some reason I just don't trust that this is going to work. I know it, it must do because it's a product they, they sell and I've seen it work on other videos but I just don't th it just seems weird to me it just seems a bit alien okay shoulder pad one. Oh, I've made mistakes this is why it's test it Tony I've made the mistake of putting on a little bit too thick and it's dripped down here onto the trim. Now can you wick it away is the question. But learning, we are learning. Thank you Test It Tony for sacrificing yourself for this noble scientific cause. Right, I can wick it away, but obviously I don't know if there's a little bit left there that's going to be a problem. We will find out. Maybe too time consuming to consider doing for a whole army of 
Chaos Space Marines or anything like that. But when you're painting giant robots, it becomes a little bit more worth doing, I think. I'm gonna paint the rest of them up with that now and it's half an hour drying time and then we'll come back after that. I'm developing techniques as I go that are kind of helping. My main technique at the moment is I put a blob in the middle of the armor panel and then I kind of use that blob and stipple it towards the armor trim, which is helping me from that problem I was having earlier where I hit the armor trim. I think this is better. Also, I'm gonna do a bit of a test. On that bit I messed up on the armor trim, I'm gonna mess up now on purpose and put a blob on there. That feels wrong. And see if I can get just that blob off when it's dry. So if I mess up, do I have a second chance? This is kind of a nice color. It's very similar to the uh, Nikolai, Nicholas Oxide. I know it's not called that. The uh, Oxidant paint thing from Games Workshop. Also, doesn't smell very nice. Not as nice as Gracie uh, paint smells. Mm. I forgot my own rule then and didn't stipple and drag. I just blobbed near the thing. So the thing now has stuff on it. The thing has stuff on it. Oh, past Maxwell, you thought this was going to be a speed technique. How you were wrong. Keep watching to find out doing this on the nights actually took bloody hours. All right, I have finished putting the, on the bits of Test It Tony that I want it on. It says it's done when it goes clear and the drying time is about half an hour. I can see it's going translucent on the bits I did a little while ago. So, you know, it's, it's starting, it's starting its process. I've done a few little tests of how thick and thin. I put it on very thick on the back of the legs, very thin on the helmet. So we can now see what the difference is in how it works. If, if I need to put it on thickly or I can get away with just a little bit. It flows quite well. I was surprised. I was expecting more of like a thick gummy consistency. But that's utterly not the case from what I've experienced today. So if you're using it or thinking about using it, Take that into account, it flows quite well like a paint. Let's come back in half an hour and see where we are with Test It Tony. Right, it's been half an hour and let's see where we're at with this. It is completely see-through. It's still got that kind of bluey tinge to it. Um, it feels rubbery, is that right? Or does that mean it's not dry? I don't know, let's press on. I'm going to test on this little bit I've got here how easy it is to get off. Can I do it with my finger? Oh, I'll do it with my nail. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Easy in theory. Now I'm going to try and get that bit off the model here and see if that's easy to do. The bit I messed up on purpose. And uh, see if I can just take it off. That would be useful to know I have a, a second life essentially if I, if I mess it up for real on the real thing. Here's this little patch on the edge of the armor here. And I'm just gonna do a little scrapey scrape. The thing is, it kind of connects to the rest of it, but I managed to cut it off then. So if I cut along the line, it's still connected a little bit to the rest of the shoulder pad mask. Maybe I could do it with a scalpel a bit better, but yo, that was a good test. So it pulled and it pulled a little bit of this loose. So I'm gonna say I haven't got a second chance and go with that, because I don't wanna mess this up for real. Yeah, I think I might be able to peel it back, if it, like peel it back onto itself and that might save a bit if I mess it up for real, but getting it off again without affecting anything it's connected to, seems a bit unlikely and improbable. Okay, next is the spray painting. The plan for this is to spray paint in metallic. I'm gonna do that now and we'll see how we get on. Now I've sprayed in with Rune Lord Brass, which I've just checked the Games Workshop website and it's not on there anymore, so I hope I've got enough in the can to do all my chaos lights. 
And I think I'm gonna start with this little metal pick thing and see if I can just tease off maybe that bit that I tested earlier. See if I can tease that off. I am a little concerned about using a metal thing like this and scratching the paint underneath. Although, it looks like it's worked. Okay. You can peel off as kind of a film. It's a little bit fiddly to get off. But on large areas on Chaos Knights rather than a small Space Marine shoulder, I think it'll be a bit easier. All right, that's the basics. That, that's how it works. Give me a sec to pick all this off and I will let you know my final thoughts on this product. Now a thing that's important about me to note is that I am a kinesthetic learner. That means I learn by doing. I can watch videos to my heart's content, but unless I actually do it myself, it doesn't go in. So this is the reason for Test It Tony. I'm sure a lot of you out there are just like me. You learn by doing. There's no other way. If you give me instructions, 30 seconds later, they've gone. But if I experience it for myself, it'll stay forever. I set about working with this little metal pick thing and these very nice little tweezers that look like a woman that I nicked from my other half, as well as that hot pink hairdryer. And yeah, it came off reasonably well. If you were a kid that liked to put PVA glue on your hand in school and peel it off, this is 100% for you. I then developed this nice little method with this plastic brush. It's got Citadel stamped on it, but I don't know where I got it. It's quite abrasive, but not so abrasive that it scratches the paint, but it agitates the rubber underneath the paint of the liquid mask and it starts to move that around and then that starts to break the paint that's on top of the rubber which means it then reveals the liquid mask you can then get your finger on top of it and the grip of your fingertip on top of the rubber means you're able to pull it to the side and the rubber sticks to your fingertip quite well and you can take whole panels off really quickly this was the technique i took forward onto my nights this is where the time came in i have majorly time lapsed this now this took me about four hours to do all of these nights. That's three nights and four war dogs, mind. If you're doing one night, then yeah, you could knock this out in a day, easy, or an afternoon. But a whole army in one go? That's quite a lot of pressure I put on myself there. And I've got to be honest, it did start to drag, but I'll talk about this later. I hate armor trim. And this, this is to save me from the pain of painting all that armor trim and quite a lot of the actual night itself. With the aforementioned metallic spray coming in soon, this is an absolute godsend of a heretical way to prime your miniatures. I'm sure I'm gonna get a few comments that are negative, saying that I've put way too much paint on these, but I haven't lost any detail whatsoever, so shove it up your ass. The layers of spray paint seem to have been so thin that all the detail has remained intact, absolutely. It's the next day. I've just eaten a big bag of blue sweets I got from the petrol station and I looked at the back afterwards and they had 70 numbers in them. Now I feel a bit weird. True story. 24 hours later after I liquid masked my nights and then sprayed the metallic, I've let them sit for a day to make sure all the metallic is definitely dry. <sighs> this is a burp and it tasted blue. The maximum amount of... <laughs> The maximum amount of time you're meant to leave this liquid mask on is 48 hours. That's the recommended maximum. So I'm gonna take them off now a nice day early and have a nice little look at what I'm left with. I have developed that lovely little scrubbing method. That lovely little scrubbing method with that plastic brush that's not so coarse it damages the paint, but is coarse enough to take the liquid mask off. So that and those lovely tweezers that look like a little woman that definitely aren't mine, I promise. Maybe they are mine. Bluey numbers are bad. But I'm gonna time lapse it again because I'm too bonkers to present. Enjoy this time lapse and I'm gonna narrate over it at a later date. Take it away, future Max. One little annoying thing I did was not to mask off the door on the top of the Chaos Knight Rampager. I very carefully masked the edges of the door and just didn't go back and fill in the middle. So I've got a brass door now. I'll correct this in the next video, I think it will be the next video. I'm going to fill in all the iron bits iron and I'm going to paint this door iron rather than the other ones are going to have a door which matches the rest of their colours. I've done little differences on all of the models and the war dogs, very subtle ones. 
and I feel like this is just adding more character. I consider myself a gardener of these models rather than an architect. I let them take me where I want to go. Any damage I actually do to them or mistakes I make is just where I'm going to put the weather in. The peelies on the big panels of these Chaos Knights were so satisfying, many of them coming off in one big peel. However, I was punished nearer the end of this by the War Dogs. The War Dogs and their small carapaces on top, they have little pits and craters, they have things bursting through the carapace, and it is a bit of a bloody nightmare. If you are going to follow this method, I really, really strongly recommend that you use it on quite smooth models. If you do want to use it on more complex models, obviously you can. Just be aware that it's just going to take you a little bit longer to tidy up those bits. I would also recommend wearing a mask, especially if you're doing metallic spray over liquid mask like this. As when I was done doing the peelies, there was metallic dust over everything. My laptop was next to this as I was recording and it was shiny. It was glittery. It looked like a fairy had come and puked all over my laptop. I would say this whole process took me about the same amount of time it took me to put it on, which is about four hours. So it took me about eight hours to get to this. However, previously, if you remember my stripping video, I painted one of these nights orange and it took me days to layer that orange. I would rather spend four hours putting this on and four hours taking it off so I can do lovely orange contrast paint that's brighter than the sun. I've uh, just got one question. Why does it look so pimping? Hello everyone that skipped to this part of the video. I know you do it, I can see the stats. As long as you pop a little sub now, we'll forget this happened, all right? And we just go about our business. You scumbag. But joke's on you, I guess, because you don't know the actual technique that's got us here, so you'll have to go back and watch it anyway. I can't believe these are just primed. They look half painted at this point. Honestly, I've seen worse. I've seen worse on the tabletop in a games workshop. I've seen worse at a tournament. I've seen worse in a display cabinet. This is an absolutely awesome technique. I think I will be using this a lot more often. Let's sum up then. It is not a speed hack. That took me hours, absolutely hours. If you're doing one night, it wouldn't be so bad. But I absolutely hate painting trim. I played old Chaos Warriors Fantasy and they killed me off painting trim. And then I moved to 40k, Space Marines, trim. So much trim. This is a fantastic way to not have to paint trim. I would gladly pick that stuff off these models for hours rather than paint trim for hours and worry about hitting anything. This is so much simpler. If you also hate trim, I've said trim like 80,000 times. If you also hate trim, do this. 100% do this. This has is, is changed as the video's gone on. I really thought this would be fast for some reason, but I'm really happy with the final results. Please like and subscribe. Share this with your friends. The last video, I don't know what the algorithm's doing. It likes it. Like, a lot compared to my other videos, it's really taken off. And if that's thanks to you liking and subscribing, then love you. So join me next time for the next part of this Chaos Knight diorama. We're gonna be painting, painting fast. <laughs> All right, I've thrown myself now. It's not a pile of shame, it's a, it's a pile of fun. See you next time. <laughs>